no matter what Larry was supposed to be treating on me over the years, usually my ankles or my knees, his fingers always seemed to find their way inside of me. Your kindness was simply a ploy to molest me every chance you got. We're speaking with three of the 156 women who came forward to share their personal stories of abuse by someone who they were told they could trust. Team USA Gymnastics doctor, Larry Nasser. Maddie, that's tough to hear. It's tough to just even hear it, never mind experiencing it. Your reaction to Nasser in court and his own victim routine of, well, it was all medical and hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. I mean, what, when you watched that and heard that, what was your reaction? I was angry, but unfortunately, I was not surprised whatsoever. He, at the courthouse, he was still trying to manipulate us. Like, we were still his, his victims, like, turning around and, and looking at us and saying his just fake apology. And, uh, and you could just see he has no remorse for what he did. And um, I don't he's just a... He's sorry for himself. He's a sad, sad, sad human being. The, let's talk about the enablers. There's a, there's a long list um, from USA Gymnastics to MSU uh, and beyond. Can we talk about th this woman, um, Clagis? Kathy Clagis? Yes. What, who is she? Kathy Clagis was the head gymnastics coach at MSU. She was also the first one to receive an, the first known report of sexual assault. There was a gymnast, Larissa Boyce, who spoke in it very courageously. She was 16 years old at the time. She came to Clagis and told Clagis in graphic detail what Larry was doing. She said he was fingering her like a boyfriend. And Clagis's response was, that's not possible. You must be mistaken. And then she proceeded to parade in all of the rest of the, her teammates in front of her uh, to humiliate her and ask if anyone else felt the same way. And then another gymnast spoke up, a 14-year-old who has testified in court but chosen to remain anonymous. Uh, and she confirmed Larissa's account. She said, he's doing the same thing to me. He's penetrating me. And Clay just refused to believe them. She then sent all of the gymnasts out of the room except Larissa, and she picked up a report form. And she said, I could sign this, but there will be serious consequences for you and Larry if you file this. And so Larissa backed down and Kathy then called Larry to tell him what Larissa had said and sent Larissa back for continued treatment. And she continued to be subjected to more sexual abuse. And almost every known victim of Larry Nasser came after that report in 1997. But the college received additional reports of abuse in three different athletic departments during 1998, 99, and 2000. There are also at least three psychiatrists that received reports of abuse, one of them being Kyle Stevens' report, and then reports from two other rowers. Not a single one of them reported. Not one. Not one reported Not the crime, one. the alleged crime at that point. Not one. What, what accountability, let's start with MSU, what accountability has it? Now the university president is stepping down with a statement that, that doesn't take full responsibility. She basically says, well, you know, in, in any sort of a, you know, situation like this, people are going to hold somebody like me accountable, so oh well. I mean, she doesn't, it doesn't seem to, here's the statement, the last year and a half has been very difficult uh, for the victims of Larry Nasser, for the university community, and for me personally. To the survivors, I can never say enough that I am so sorry that a trusted, renowned physician was really such an evil, evil person who inflicted such harm under the guise of medical treatment. Here it is. As tragedies are politicized, blame is inevitable. As president, it's only natural that I am the focus of this anger. Does that sound like taking accountability to you? Not at all. Deflecting not accountability. But as, as appalling as that statement is, the board of trustees has actually been significantly worse. The vice chair of the board of trustees came out shortly after I came forward and called us ambulance chasers who were looking for a payday. He recently said no leadership at MSU should have to resign because there would be too much collateral damage. Who said that? Vice Chair Ferguson on the MSU Board of Trustees. He then said that we need to remember that there's more going on than just this Nasser thing and that we need to look at the full scope of MSU because Simon did a really good job raising funds for their basketball stadium. <laughs> what happened to Kathy Clagis? Uh, Clagis was allowed to retire with a uh, with full pension. And MSU has repeatedly refused to acknowledge that the way that she handled that report of abuse uh, was inappropriate and that there were devastating consequences because of it. Uh, and then there's the question of, of USA Gymnastics. USA Gymnastics, which is an organization to which so many parents entrusted their extremely talented, hopeful, aspirational young girls, thinking that they would be well looked after. And I, I want to get to them, but ha ha have they contacted any of you? 
They have not. No. No. Not after you came forward with your story, your testimonials. No, and in, in fact, the, the entire reason this story even came out was because there were several other brave USAG athletes uh, who blew the whistle on the failure to report sexual abuse in general within USAG. USAG had a, a policy of not reporting abuse. They had buried uh, the files on 54 member coaches in a 10-year period, reports of abuse, allowing these coaches to hop from gym to gym. And Director Penny uh, defended this policy under oath, saying that they had to have this policy to quote-unquote avoid a witch hunt. And none of those gymnasts who were abused by coaches that were allowed to hop from gym to gym were ever contacted either. All right, so Carrie Perry uh, is the new president for USA Gymnastics. This is the statement she gave us. Uh, I am profoundly saddened that a single woman, a single girl, a single athlete was hurt. I will not waver on my commitment to focus each and every day on our organization's highest priority, the safety, health, and well-being of our athletes. We will create a culture that empowers and supports them. Our commitment is uncompromising, and it is my hope that everything we do going forward makes this very clear. Um, thank you all. We're going to be right back. Don't go away. His ability to gain my trust and the trust of my parents his grooming and carefully calculated brazen sexual assault was the result of deliberate, premeditated, intentional, and methodological patterns of abuse, patterns that were rehearsed long before I walked through Larry's exam room door and which continued to be perpetrated, I believe, on a daily basis for 16 more years until I filed the police report. We are back now with just a very small portion of the women who are survivors of Team USA Gymnastics doctor Larry Nasser, who was provided with unfettered access to young girls for 30 years by enablers around every corner. And the question is, how? And who will be held accountable? Rachel, Team USA Gymnastics, USA G Gymnastics, publicly, they say they're with you, right? They, they're, they're shocked and they're horrified. But there's a, there's a case against them in court, right? And what are they saying there? Well, they have made the statement that they are with us, but we were in court yesterday facing down our abuser and stopping the worst pedophile in U.S. history. USAG was also in court, too, but they were not in our courtroom with us. They were in court, in federal court, seeking to dismiss all of the claims against them, arguing in part that they had no duty to any of us to warn us. MSU was also in court during the time that we were facing down our abuser, but not in our court and not with us. They were in court asking to dismiss all the claims against us, arguing in part that no one that had knowledge at MSU of what Larry was doing bore any responsibility and that it didn't count as notice to the school because it wasn't reported to a high enough authority. Because you, the girls, didn't figure out exactly to whom it needed to be reported. That's right. Our fault. That's correct. I was 12. <sighs> the U.S. Olympic Committee is now calling for every member of the board of USA Gymnastics to resign, to step down. Should that happen? I can say this much. <laughs> when Director Penny made that statement under oath that he wanted to avoid a witch hunt, and then he was eventually asked to step down, the remaining board members signed a letter in full support of Penny, making it clear that they didn't feel he needed to resign. They then hired a private investigator to give them steps for moving forward. And this investigator produced a 100-page report detailing all of the things they needed to change to keep children safe. They were all common sense policies, one of which is that you need to mandatorily report the sexual assault of a child. So I have this to say to the board of USAG. If you have to pay a private investigator to come in and tell you that you need to report the sexual assault of a child, you have no business being on that board of a child <laughs> Assistant Attorney General felt so confident in her, can't you? Right? <laughs> she was described as the picture of poise in the courtroom, and that's obvious to all of us sitting here. Now there are civil lawsuits as well, and the question is whether, first of all, before I get to that, but I have to ask you before we go about the judge, Aquilina. Did you see this woman? Mm -hmm. It's, first of all, it's so rare to have a, a woman in power hear this kind of case. And she wasn't ashamed to go with that. I mean, she shamed him publicly. She referred to the sister army. This, what was it like for you to hear yourselves reflected in, in the trier of fact up there, the woman who was handling the sentencing? Um, it was very powerful. I, going, in, going into this, um, I maybe knew personally a handful of these women out of the 156 that testified, and us 
going through this horrific experience together really does feel like a, a sisterhood. And I mean, you see Rachel, like she's inspirational and she's, if it wasn't for her, I don't know if I would have come out. And it's like our sisterhood army and she's kind of like our general. I, lo I look up to her so much. All, all of you are very brave. All of you are brave. It took a lot of guts to do what you did. And sadly, you know this is happening someplace else in this country right now in some other organization. And those people are on notice. They're on notice about the warning signs and the consequences to covering it up and putting the onus on the little girls to protect themselves or the little boys, given the case. I wanna say this, we mentioned the Carolis and their facilities. Uh, they've, been, they've been dragged into this because they had Nasser at some of their facilities as well. They have issued a statement denying, knowing that Nasser was abusing young girls at their facility. We will continue to follow the civil case uh, as it plays out. Thank you. Thank you all. We'll be right back. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.